Back in the 1970s, when I started in television, Australian gardens were jam-packed with Aussie native plants. Everybody loved them. But since then, their popularity has certainly waned, which is really surprising because today, we have the best hybrid native plants that we have ever seen in 200 years. I'm an hour and a half southeast of Melbourne, out on the beautiful Mornington Peninsula. Here at Ausplant Nursery and Garden, it's a hidden treasure trove of Australian native plants. This could be said to be the native plant that led the charge in the 1970s and won it, Grevillea Robin Gordon. It proved to all of the people and all of the gardeners in Australia that there was a native plant that could flower 12 months of the year. Spectacular red flowers and a lot of hybrids have resulted and followed this particular fantastic plant. Fantastic colour range and plants of different sizes and shrubs and ground covers right down to Grevillea lanigera, a beautiful plant with spectacular flowering. We'll always see Grevilleas in our gardens, but the colour range, well, it's just getting better every year. Wattles, you know, have always been popular in gardens since colonial times. But of course, 45 years ago, this was the most popular one, the Cootamundra wattle. Well, today, look at the cultivars, the varieties you can get. A prostrate form that just literally cascades down through a garden. Fabulous flowers and the same beautiful leaves. Now, if you haven't got space for a cascading one, how about a lollipop one? Yet yeah, just like a weeping standard rose, you can now get a weeping standard wattle. But that, with wattles, is just the beginning. Look at this little fella. This is honey bun. Yeah, it's how witty I honey bun. A beautiful little rounded plant, metre wide, half a metre high. Fabulous, lovely, soft, beautiful green foliage. There's also a ground cover form called Green Wave that just spills over the ground in a lovely, soft, delicate way. These are textures that we've not seen in native plants before. And then there's this beauty here. This is Acacia privissima and a lovely little rounded bun. Look, the foliage is a little bit prickly, but look at the amount of flower bud. It's just about to go nuts. It's called Little Nugget and it's a beauty. Banksias have always been in the 70s club, literally since the 1770s right through to the 1970s. This is Banksia ericifolia, the first Banksia that Joseph Banks actually touched in Botany Bay in 1770. It's a beautiful plant and this is another form of it with bigger flowers, giant candles. It's a great variety. Look at the flower spikes and they can get even taller than that. But if you'd like something just a little bit more compact, still with spectacular flowers, Look at this fellow here, this is Banksia Coastal Cushion. Just look at those flowers. Look, you could only say those little styles are burgundy, a great hairbrush, but the cone is a bright gold, fabulous plant. I really think it's one of the best of the native plants we have. There's other varieties of this one, honey pots, what a beautiful thing, and stumpy gold. In the 1970s, tourism in Western Australia really took off. Everyone was going to see the WA wildflowers. One of the plants that really captured everyone's imagination were the Lessinaltias. But you know, from the wild species, they didn't really grow that well in home gardens. But the cultivars or the hybrids that have been created in the last 30 or 40 years are truly spectacular. This one's called El Dorado, and it's a beautiful golden yellow colour. But if blue is your favourite colour, how about big blue? It's a Leshenaldia that just absolutely will knock your socks off. A fabulous little plant, and look at those flowers. They just glow even in the cloudy days like today. Fabulous plant. The Leshenaldias are worth looking for. It's not only the new spectacular colours that are so different to the 1970s native plants, it's the way that we use them in the garden. The colours, the foliage colours throughout the year, the flowers that now appear literally every month of the year. It's the textures, the way we can use them in the landscape. They might be of retro interest, 
but native plants are going to be with us and their hybrids and cultivars for generations to come.